tell of Liberians, member of the National Working Group Against Female Genital Mutilation, Nawoka FGM, the fourth estate, ladies and gentlemen. We acknowledge with keen interest the one year existing Executive Order number 92 issued by the former President Edding Johnson Sully on January 19, 2018, which among others banned the practice of female genital mutilation for girls under age 18. The Executive Order has been considered by many including civil society actors as a step forward in the quest of any FGM in Liberia. We recognize the efforts of all civil society actors, the press, relevant government ministries and agencies, and our regional and international partners who selfless work around ending FGM in Liberia contributed to the issuance of the executive order. The executive order has not been effective as anticipated over its one year of existence as a law, mainly due to lack of knowledge on the existence of the ban and lack of a coordination, method sectoral implementation of the ban by state agencies. It has been noted that even with the existence of the executive order, there has been an increase in the number of butchers with practice extending to 11 counties from the previous 10 counties, the newest being Grand Jillian County. Despite these challenges, at least one notable achievement was made. The National Traditional Council of Chiefs and Elders of Liberia, and along with the Liberia National Police, in September 2018, intervened and saved over 100 school-going girls who were forcibly recruited and were at the brink of being subjected to FGM in Nima County and arrested six practitioners responsible. That was a result of calls made by members of the public and press statements issued by Women's Solidarity Incorporated and He For She Crusaders. Liberia giving the government 72 hours ultimatum to restore the liabilities of the girls on, of the girls. On this count, we say thanks to the NTCL and the LNP. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, our concern is focused on the expiration of the one-year duration of the executive order as of January 18, 2019 which in effect decriminalized the act of female genital mutilation in Liberia once again. During the 123rd section of the Human Rights Committee in Geneva, Switzerland, the government committed itself through the statement by the Deputy Minister of Justice to protect and promote the human rights of its citizens, including fighting against all harmful traditional and cultural practices as stated in the Library Constitution, Article 5D. Library have also signed and ratified several regional and international human rights instruments, including the Protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights on the Rights of Women in Africa, the Maputo Protocol, the African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the Child, and the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, SIDAO, all of which call upon the state to ensure that women and girls are protected from all forms of violence and discrimination, including female genital mutilation. In view of the above, and in the absence of a specific legal framework against FGM in Liberia, we passionately call on the head of the National Traditional Council of Chiefs and Elders of Liberia, Chief Zanzan Kao, and his able lieutenant to ensure that there is a restraining mechanism put in place to disallow traditional practitioners forcibly subject women and girls to the practice of female genital mutilation as a permanent solution to the situation is being sought. 
Most importantly, we are calling on President George M. Buya, Vice President Joel Howard Taylor, along with the 54 legislature to ensure a permanent protection of women and girls against the practice of female genital mutilation in adherence to the many regional and international human rights instruments that Liberia subscribes to be legislating a law prohibiting the practice in the country in as soon as possible time. The human rights of women and girls, like all others, cannot be compromised under this popular regime of the Liberian people. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we thank everyone who has been in, engaged with the campaign to end FGM in Liberia over the years, while at the same time, we like to encourage all of us to keep the campaign on and active till a permanent solution is achieved. We are also calling on the regional and international communities to not let Liberia down in the campaign against FGM as we encourage their support in all forms and at all levels of advocacy. Thank you. Okay, your first question. Nimba and Grand Basel are counties right now that are leading. And to add to them, right there again, Grand Cape Mount is there too. But the second question asks for what are we doing in the absence now of the executive order? No, I said what the executive come? order with the, 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 with the executive order that the two issued by President Salif. Yeah. There was still practice of FGM activities in the country. Mm -hmm. So what do you foresee if uh, there is nothing done by the government and uh, international partners to ensure that, that we end FGM? What do you foresee to happen in that area? Yes, we, we, we foresee the increase of FGM in the absence of the executive order right now. Because if there's a law that was passed and still FGM was on an increase, and right now the law has expired, we know that FGM will now be on the increase more than it was before, without a law. Yeah. Yes, uh, my name is Samia Dix, and you made mention of this issue of uh, you people working with Chief Zansan Kao, mentioning Crown Basel County as uh, one of the counties that is practicing or the practices on a higher increase. What level of cooperation are you getting from him? Yes, when it comes to the level of cooperation, like we, we refer to, uh, after our press statement giving the government a 72 hour ultimatum, we then went to the, the chief office and spoke with him. It was true that, that the regional office in Nima took that stand. So we know that there are some corporate level of cooperation. And now uh, they are agreeing that all of us can work together along with the practitioners to see the um, FGM come to a slower pace. Yes. My name is Grace Williams. I report for CTV Africa. I want, to, uh, I want you to elaborate a little bit when it comes to the issue of the recent sitting with the uh, House of Representatives and that of stakeholders and the response from that of Zanzan Kawa toward the domestic violence bill that is before the House of Legislators and he's saying that the FGM law shouldn't be inclusive in the domestic violence bills, bill. Yes. There have been so many interactions, so many um, meetings when it comes to the Domestic Violence Act. Um, the legislature came up and said that the domestic violence, uh, FGM is that domestic violence. So with that, they should be exclusively addressed. So there have been consultation all around, and the final thing was at the, uh, um, the meeting to farm it on, and it was then now agreed that FGM will not be uh, place within the Domestic Violence Act for its passage. So anytime from now, the Domestic Violence Act will be passed without the FGM component. Okay, so FGM now same way it's without well, um, any implementation um, for, for the now, government against there FGM. Is, there is an exclusive bill on FGM that should be submitted at any time to the legislature since indeed they say FGM should be treated exclusively. Yes. I'm Master from OKFM. Uh, my concern is due to the executive order that expired. And in that order, I think the president made it clear that only 18 should now go FGM. 
So what are you pushing for? Do you want the same train to continue that like it should be at a consensual age before you own a way? It should be waiting or you just want to ban it? Absolutely. Human right does not go away your consent. The government is under obligation to protect all citizens, whether you are 18 or you are above 18. So the protocols that the government conventions and other things that government have signed and ratified within Liberia call for abolition of FGM okay. and that age of consent. So now, uh, like I spoke with uh, one traditional leader, and she uh, she was really open to say that you people, on the other hand, they. Of civil society organizations are pushing for the issue of our tradition or their practices to be put aside. So, what actually in this issue, especially the poor or the sanding that you want it to be eliminated? We are all traditional people. The fact that I'm from Africa and I'm from Liberia to be specific, Lima County, I'm a cultural person and I respect tradition. But the issue that we are discussing is not about tradition, it's not about the Sunday, because the Sunday is an institution that people go to learn other things pertaining to our culture. So we are not against Sunday. We are saying there is a practice within the Sunday that is called the female genital mutilation. It's what we are talking about to be abolished in okay. that Sunday. My final question is just very short. I want to understand, now that the FGM bill will be standing on its own, that the Domestic Violence Act will have nothing to do with FGM. Do you think FGM elimination will survive in Liberia? Yes, it will survive in Liberia because there are people who are now getting to know that what we are saying, like there's not only Liberia issue, FGM is practiced in 28 African countries and it's a global issue and not for Liberia. So they are now reasoning and we know one of these days we will have a law on FGM.